Charlotte Emily, the daughter of Henry Emily. The mother? Who knows? I sure don't. FNAF doesn't really like mothers, but that's okay, because she has no story relevance. Okay, but which Charlotte Emily? The one from the book? No. The one from the games? No. I mean, yes. But why not the one from the book? No. Okay, okay. Game Charlotte. But why? It's easier. So Game Charlotte's early life is pretty unknown, so I'm going to assume she was a very young football player. Good for her! But fast forward past her footballing days and she is dead. And possessing a puppet animatronic. What? How did that happen? Well, muchacho. Allow me to explain. This is the tragedy of Charlotte Emily. Henry Emily, idea inventor of Chuck E. Cheese animatronics, decides he wants to put his ideas into fruition. But wait, he can't. Why? He's probably poor. But don't worry, Henry, because by the time college comes around, William of the Afton Estate ends up as your roommate, Eureka! He also loves Chuck E. Cheese animatronics. What a coincidence! On Eureka, he's insane and wants to live forever. But Henry is insane too, and he doesn't know about all the other stuff, so it's a match made in heaven. Henry seems to be more of an inside shut-in with no social skills, more of an idea guy. Well, William, though, also being an idea guy, albeit a murderous idea guy, is much more friendly and outgoing. Especially with children. That's not gonna come back later, right? So, they decide to put their idea-making brains together, and ha! Bear. But he's yellow. Yay! And he has a purple top hat and bow tie. What a friendly fella. But a lonely fella. So let's give him a buddy. A spring one. Well, they're both spring and go by the name of Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie. Whoa. Okay, pause. Because this is where the timeline gets muddy a bit. And skipping past the utter insanity that is this game. And this one too. We can assume poor murderous psychopath inventor William lost a child out of his three. Oh, what a poor soul. While poor insane inventor Henry, I mean seriously, this guy had no problem spraying Michael as insane and throwing him into an institution, gained a child. Who's that? Come on, it's, it's Charlotte Emily. William, grief stricken by the kid that may or may not have died by his own hands, decides to even the score per se with Henry. The man who may or may not have contributed to his kid's death. But wait, before we can get to that, we have to talk about this grand invention called the Security Puppet. What does it do? Well, it allows you to have better security, hence the name, by checking color-coded wristbands on passerby kids. How nifty. I'm sure this won't result in something horrible. Anyways, what's William up to? Oh, he's getting in his car. I wonder where he's going. Well, while we wonder, let's check up on old Charlotte. Ah, oh, poor girl isn't allowed in the restaurant due to being bullied. Well, that sucks. She has to watch Frederick himself deliver cakes to these greedy jerks and... Oh, hey, it's William driving up to Charlotte. I'm sure he's going to give her a safe drive back to the... Uh, oh. Ouch! That's got to hurt, and it did, because Charlotte has now run away into an alleyway bleeding out. But don't worry, the security puppet chased after her and in a Chucky-esque sacrifice is fused with the soul of Charlotte, making her the puppet. Well, Henry, in a depressive state, decides to do what he does best and does nothing. Okay, well that didn't work. Yeah, he continues to work on his Fred Bear's restaurant with William. By now, they have added four more characters. Wow! Who are they? Well, they're Freddy, Bonnie, Chica and, of course, Foxy, along with a new animatronic by the name of the Puppet. Or the Marion specifics don't matter, alright? But little do they know this new animatronic is actually the security puppet! Dun, dun, dun. It's pretty obvious. Apparently, they found the original robot of the security puppet destroyed and withered and said, Yep! Let's do that again, but remove the security aspect. So they ignored the dead corpse of a child next to it and brought it to the workshop, unknowingly giving life to Charlotte. Yippee! But wait, silly old William is back to his murdering ways after getting a taste of it with the death of Charlotte, and he decides he'll use his charms to lure children in the back room and really stuff them into suits. 
They'll never check what's right in front of them. Ho, ho, ho. Delightfully devilish, William. But Charlotte isn't about any of that moving on to no. the afterlife crap and decides to tether the souls of the children to the suits. And the children are rightfully pissed about that. But instead of taking it out on the person who did it, they'd rather take it out on phone people. Oh, did I mention Fred Burrs is defunct? Yeah, sorry, Frederick fans, but old Fred is closed forever. Or at least until four years later, where in 1987, a new restaurant is made. Yay! The name? Freddy Fazbear is closed forever. And then it reopens with the same name, but this time, new animatronics. Toy animatronics. Oh, 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 they're not possessed. But don't worry, original gang fans, they're still here, but in the form of broken, more withered versions of themselves, and Charlotte is here as well. Hi, Charlotte. She doesn't speak much, but there's an extra character that I, like FNAF VR, willingly decided to ignore the existence of. Who? Golden Freddy, which is a more vengeful, hateful spirit hell-bent on the torture of William. Yeah, how about we... Forget about them for a minute, because this location has closed. What? Already? Why? Well, apparently a certain animatronic, not calling names, <coughs> Mangle decided a fun pastime would be to gnaw on the frontal lobe of an unsuspecting day shift guard in an event known as the Bite of 87. Don't worry, old Fritz survived, and oh my god, saying that name made me remember those old FNAF drawings of, like, the purple guy and stuff. Like, you remember those, but... <laughs> but on track, Freddy's reopens again, this time with the old cast put together, and Charlotte's there, too. I mean, in FNAF 2, she's shown to be in that location in a flashback, but she never was mentioned in the original game. Probably just a retcon, but nonetheless, the location closes. May or may not have been caused by the death of Phone Guy, and for years, Freddy, along with Charlotte, are forgotten. Cut to the far, far future, 30 years later, a horror attraction by the name of Fazbear Frights is opened, and w wait, 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 wait. What happened to William? Well, after murdering five kids and stuffing them into suits, people start to notice, and soon William is faced with jail time. But not our William, so he decides to frame someone and succeeds. Yay! But William learns more about ghosts and... Remnant. He suspects the animatronics may or may not be possessed, but daunted with the idea the animals are going to get revenge murder in his sleep, he decides to go back to the abandoned Freddy location and dismantle the animatronics one by one. But oh wait you stupid idiot, that relieves the spirits of the dead and they aren't so happy with old William and decide he should die. Yeah, but none to fear, the spring is here. William decides to hide in the suit. Wait, gimme, give gimme give a minute. Give me one second. But due to the moisture in the abandoned room, the bolts inside the suit decide to give, crushing every bone in his flesh and his everything. Everything in his body just mangled up in an event known as a spring lock failure. Yeah! So there lies poor William left to die. Oh, oh, no, no, wait, he's back. Yeah, in the making of Fazbear Frights, the team behind it finds a suspiciously rotting corpse looking bunny. Oh, wait. That's William. Back alive, somehow, after dueling William for a while, and, oh yeah, Charlotte's there now. As a phantom, which are still unexplained to this day, you decide to burn down the building with everything in it, including Charlotte and Spring. He's already back. But, let's pause, because Charlotte, in an act of kindness, decides to give Golden Freddy his happiest day, finally easing the spirits of the original five kids. But Golden Freddy has one more soul remaining in him. William is still on the prowl, and spirits such as Charlotte still remain. Henry finally decides 
hey, I should probably do something about all these lunatics, and also his daughter, and so he chooses the best course of action, ROBOTS! While using a sound device to lure Spring, now Scrap Trap, Molten Freddy, and Scrap Baby, he knows his daughter won't be fooled by it and decides to capture her with a kidnapping robot named Lefty. After wrangling them all up to that one prison of a restaurant, he burns it down, finally setting everyone free. Henry, Elizabeth, William, of course, Charlotte. But William doesn't stay dead, meaning it was all for nothing. The tragedy of Charlotte, not only her death, but her failure. Her failure to a problem that shouldn't have been hers. Yet in every instance, the prison of her robot body prevented her from changing anything. William always comes back.